Hello, I'm Graham Horton and welcome to today's video. Now today's video is a how-to on how to connect your Panasonic Lumix bridge camera or Panasonic Lumix uh, mirrorless camera to a laptop which is running Windows 10 or Windows 11. Now this has come about because one user wanted to connect his camera to transfer the stored images on the SD card to his PC rather than to take out the card from the camera and plug it into the reader on his PC. But you can also use this to sort of tether the camera to your PC so as you're taking pictures they will be transferred either in full size or a size that you can select to your PC so you can actually use it for using as a tethered PC over Wi-Fi. Now it's quite an involved process so I'm going to try and set that up for you. Um, the reader asks about the FZ82 which is the same as the FZ1000 uh, so the FZ1000 doesn't have a touch screen but I can use a HDMI output from the FZ1000 where unfortunately the FZ82 will not show you a HDMI output except in the play mode and you actually need it in the recording mode so we're going to look at the exact same Wi-Fi setup using the FZ1000 as you'll find on any other of the Panasonic Lumix cameras. So I've got a laptop here running Windows 10 and I'm going to take you through the process of setting up the Windows 10 uh, computer to enable you to accept the Wi-Fi from your camera. So it's a bit involved so hopefully I'll take it slowly enough for you to follow. So the first thing we want to do is to have a look at our Windows 10 PC and you can see here the desktop. To make it easier for, to, for you to connect the camera to the PC, it's advisable to, first of all, rename your PC into something a little bit more easy, as you've got to input this through the keyboard of your uh, camera. With a touch screen it's not too bad, but with a camera like the FZ1000 you're using the menu operation and that is a bit more involved. So first thing to do is go into the uh, settings of your Windows 10 and go into system and then at the bottom of that list you'll see about and in that you've got the option here to rename this PC so currently the name of the computer is desktop 616161DUV which you'd have to input into your camera to gain access so what I'm going to do is rename this as um, GH in capitals and then 1 So now we're renaming. Unfortunately, you've got to do a restart to enable this to operate. So I'm going to do a restart and resume the video in a moment. Now the next step is to create a shared folder on our PC that we can share over the Wi-Fi network to our camera so we can access it. So let me go back to the PC and show you how you create your network shared folder. So with your file explorer, under your network now you can see that you've got the GH1 that you've created or that will be the name of your PC as we renamed it in the first step. I'm going to create a folder on my desktop which will be my camera import. So I'm going to go to the desktop and then in your ribbon bar at the top you've got new folder so I'm going to create a new folder. And then I'm going to rename it and I'm going to put this as uh, cam imports. So that will be my folder that I am going to drop all the files from, either by copying them from the camera over the network or as we tether the camera to the network. So we've created the folder, but now we make the folder visible to the network. So by clicking on that folder name and by um, looking at properties we can share the folder first of all and we need to share it so it's under my username my desktop camera import share it and we need to give access to users. Now you can either create a new user and this will bring you up to the facility to create another account. So we, here we're going to go manage another account, add a new user 
and if you go to family and other users this allows you to create a new user to the group so add someone else to this PC now normally the account would use a Microsoft account so we're going to say I don't have the permission to do this so I don't have the information so we're going to add the user without a Microsoft account and we're going to add a new user to this PC and we're going to call it Lumix because that's going to be the name of the uh, camera etc that we're going to connect it with normally you would add a password here and we'll just use PWD and PWD now unfortunately this procedure does need you to answer the security questions it won't let you do it without so we can go what was your first pet's name answer A what was your city we were born answer B and security question three what was your childhood nickname answer C that allows you to add that user to the group so you can actually now use it in the files so now we've got camera imports if we go back to properties share we can now add that Lumix user to this particular group so we add now we need to add the permissions for that user so we want to have read and write permissions we want to read and write from that directory so we'll now go share now that's not the end of it we need to look at advanced sharing and put a tick in the share folder box and apply and click OK then close so now we've got a shared folder on our uh, desktop which can be accessed by anyone with that access over the network so now we need to create the connection to that network from the camera so we need to switch over to the camera and again using the FZ1000 I'm going to go into the Wi-Fi setup Wi-Fi function right we want to create a new connection we're going to be first of all sending stored images in the camera so we'll select that option we're going to connect to the PC we're going to go direct and we're going to use a manual connection now it's now creating a hotspot from the camera which the PC can recognize so what we need to do now is go back to the PC and enter that information onto the screen so open up your network properties of your Windows 10 PC and you can now see that the FZ1000 has now appeared on there so we just need to click that and click connect now we need to add that security key so I'm just going to enter the security key from the camera and then click on next now the camera will try to connect to that and you can see that it's looking for a manual input so I'll select menu set and this is the computer we're going to connect to so it's going to be G H and now change over to numerical input GH1 and then set one of the things you might happen is that your network discovery is turned off and mine is actually turned off at the moment so turn on file sharing and connect to a private network so now under GH1 if I double click that you should see the camera imports and a shared drive so back on the camera you now see that it's looking for a username and the user that we created was Lumix so again we just need to change over to lowercase So L U M I X and set 
and now we go to the password field and again to lowercase and we just did password with PWD so P W D and then set and then press next and now you can see the folder that we had created on our laptop called camera imports so we're going to select that folder now it's asking me to select the images for sending over to the camera and you can actually change the size of the file that you're going to send across either send it in the original size uh, JPEG or RAW whichever you've shot and you can actually delete any location data if you wanted to if you wanted to change that you press your display button and it says do you want to set the original size or change it and then you can see the options you've got for uh, creating the size and aspect ratio of the file that you're going to send so in this case I'm going to send the original file over to my PC and it will be in JPEG uh, if I had so JPEG and RAW then it would you could select the JPEG plus RAW or the RAW file so I'm just going to select the JPEG press enter now I go over to set and now it'll ask me do I want to send a single single file or multiple select so I'm going to select multiple files here then you can use your cursor to select the file you want press menu set to uh, lock that one in place then menu set let's just do one more menu set and then you can use the display button or the OK to send it across so if you had a touch screen you could touch the display OK or use the display button it's going to tell you that it's going to take three minutes to transfer those files so across to yes press enter and connections failed so we've got some facility here we haven't set up just going to recheck the properties on the file so sharing the file is, is set to share Lumix has got read and write properties I just click share for that done and if we go to advanced sharing share this folder set and permissions we need to change uh, to full control and apply OK so now we should be able to access that file again so if you're OK multi set let's just select a couple here now then display OK two minutes and now it's transferring those files across so it was a case of we again hadn't set the right permissions for that particular folder now you'll notice on the PC if we just quickly go back over to the PC under camera imports if we double click that you can see that it has now created a folder with today's date so this is under desktop of course and if we double click that we'll see the two files that we just transferred over there and if I double click that it will open that file for us that was a file that I sent across and the other one was the outside shot with the GoPro now we can actually save that destination of the camera so if we exit from that now and then can register that as our current destination so we'll register it to the favorites press OK it puts you in the network name so we've got GH1 as the network and I'm going to add here a file transfer so I'm just going to put um, FT as file transfer and set that and that's now been registered to favorites now I'm going to uh, terminate the connection 
I'm now going to set up a second destination on the camera which will allow us to transfer files as they've been captured in the camera to our PC. So back to the camera, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi function and new connection, send images while recording to PC again direct manual connection now if we just go to the PC obviously as we come off the network the PC has actually tried to acquire uh, internet connection so we'll go back to our FZ1002 and click connect it's now connected so if we go back to the camera it's again now asking us for a manual input so menu set again we're going to go to GH1 so G uh, if you're doing this with a touchpad on the camera it's much easier I'm having to do it by the keyboard to enable us to capture the output over HDMI GH1 set and again it's looking for our username so again it's going to be Lumix so I want to go to lowercase okay it's Lumix and then set and then it wants the password which was lowercase again and we want P W D so that is the password for the user Lumix set and then press next and you can see we've got the selected folder again which is camera imports menu set image send again so again you can select whether you're going to use the original size or a uh, scaled down size and they will be captured as the camera takes a picture so we just need to go over to set the camera is now extended and if I take off my lens cap because I wanted a black background the pictures that I take now with the camera so if I just uh, shoot over in the studio here I capture that image You might briefly notice there is a R appears on the screen when it's sending that image over. If we have a look at the PC in our camera imports folder, you can see those files that I've just sent from the camera. If you notice there were um, I just hover the mouse over the file, we can see they are five megabyte files they were sending across quite quickly. So it is an instantaneous capture almost. So those are the files that we captured directly from the camera. Now we know that that's working, can we go back to the camera and select the Wi-Fi function again? And we want to select a destination now from history. And so from the history, the last one on the stack will be the connection we made to our PC. Use the right hand arrow key or tap the menu on the screen to register to favorite. And again it's brought up the PC name or the connection name and I'm going to add in there um, direct capture so I'll use DC direct capture and set so now that's been registered to the favorite so when I want to use the camera again I just go into Wi-Fi Wi-Fi function and select a destination from favorite so there I've got direct file transfer and direct capture so if I want to new go direct file transfer now I just select that the camera will connect 
go over to your laptop to make sure that you've enabled it in the network connectivity there's the FZ1000 popped up again so it will connect over to the camera so it's now asking us to select the files that we want and again a multiple select I'll select two three four five five files then press the display key it's going to take four minutes proceed yes and you can see the speed at which is traveling uh, transferring those files across to the camera and it says transfer complete so again exit from that file if I wanted to capture images again then a destination from history or destination from favorite rather and I want to do the direct capture again it will connect to the camera so it's setting up the username and password to access the network shared folder and it's now asking me to set that the camera will extend so I can actually take the pictures and if I look at a few shots around the studio the three four five six so it should have now sent those six files across the network so if we go back to the PC we can see the folders that have just gone across and if I just check on the back of the camera the last file try and find the file name before the uh, yeah, one one three four six nine two. So nine. The last file was four six nine two, and if we look at the camera here, it's four six nine two. So that was the last file. So we know this has been working correct. So you can see that was quite an involved process with the early versions of Windows, such as XP. It was much easier to file share and set permissions than it has been with Windows 10 and 11 because Microsoft are driving you to create a Microsoft account rather than a local account. But if you set up your local account, you can actually do that yourself. So you can see it's quite an involved process to set up the file transfer system from your camera to your PC. If you are just transferring files, it's quicker to take out the SD card and insert that into your PC and copy the files across. The only advantage is in the file transfer where you are capturing the files from the buffer and sending them over Wi-Fi before they go to the SD card. So that's the only benefit as I can see for this particular operation.